Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the Grandstream GWN, and in this case, the 7062 uh, wireless router. It's also a wired router. Uh, and this very well may apply to all of the GWN series routers. I've seen indications in firmware that they all share the same firmware, so the setup may indeed be the same. Um, been very impressed with the router. I'm using it in my own store as a first test. So far, the speeds have been superior to my previous router, and um, I think it may be the way I'm going to go move forward. So this video uh, is going to take you through the setup process. It's going to take you through port forwarding, um, setting up separate VLANs, uh, attaching your device to the, um, the GWN uh, cloud environment, and uh, try to cover all the basics at the very least. Anyway, thanks for watching. With no further ado, let's go with it. Okay, so here's how you set up the um, GWN7062 wireless router. You can connect to it via an Ethernet cable right out of the box. It's already set up a DHCP. It's going to give you an IP address. You can also connect to it via Wi-Fi right out of the box. You'll see a wireless signal called uh, GWN and whatever numbers are after it. Attach yourself to that signal. It's going to give you an IP address. If you attach to both, you'll get two IP addresses. And it will always be starting with a .80. So once you're attached, you can log into your router via that IP address and you'll then be able to see the administration area. Now, if your login page doesn't look like this, don't be alarmed. You have a, a different version of their firmware. You can upgrade the firmware and you'll be looking at the same thing or whatever the current thing is. So let's go ahead and log in. The password for the Wi-Fi, I should point out, is in fact the same as the password logging in. So on the bottom of your router, if you flip that router underneath, you're going to see a password for your SSID that is in fact the same password that's used for the administrator when you log in. So let's go ahead and log in. Now it is recommended that when you're logged into the device that you also are connected to, that the computer you're using to access it is also connected to some other active internet device and that way you can download firmware at the same time it's not necessary but it would allow you to get the firmware installed right away okay now we have already set up this router let's talk about some of the settings that we needed to use under network settings we set up our WAN that is our internet service providers incoming port we click operation edit and this is the screen that you'll be presented with. You can call the WAN anything you want. Uh, we are using a static IP as opposed to DHCP. And there we enter in our static IP address, a subnet mask, the gateway, and a preferred DNS server. All those things are required. And then that can be saved. Now let's talk about LAN. In our particular case, we wanted to set up two different LANs and you have that luxury within this particular uh, device. So the first one we set up using, you can call this anything you want, this helps us define it. Uh, it's an IPv4. That's the gateway IP that we would like it to be. It's completely arbitrator. It's completely arbitrary. There we go. Um, subnet mask. We are going to turn off DHCP because we want our server to control that. Your situation may be different. And then we're going to save that. If you do want to have a guest or an, an IP VLAN that has nothing to do with your, uh, your business files, then you may want to create another public access uh, VLAN here. And we're going to start that off with 100 and... Uh, provide the uh, IP, v, the range, this one is DHCP, and uh, we'll provide a range that guests can log in, and once again, uh, preferred DNS server, and if you wish, an alternate DNS server. 
Now let's talk a little bit about how that would come together. The VLAN port, you know, we've just added our VLANs, two of them. The VLAN port settings allow us to say in the back of the actual router, the physical ports, what's going on back there. So LAN 1, we have edited and said we only want VLAN 1 to be able to. So when we plug a cable into one and send it to our switch, we can be sure that three will never see anything going on with one. Uh, on LAN 2, that's the second port, we are allowing both VLAN 1 and 3 to be visible there. Port number 3, we only want the guest port in case we want to do something with that. And uh, LAN 4, also uh, VLAN 1 and 3. And to be quite honest, I'm a little bit confused by the PVID setting here. And uh, because these are the port numbers, clearly, these are the allowed VLANs. I've got to dig in on what that is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the wireless signal you're going to be putting out there. Uh, we're going to look at access point management, and we're going to look at SSIDs. And in this case, remember, we're using this as a router, not as an access point. Uh, we have created, this is what you see in the air. Make it anything you want to. Wi-Fi has to be toggled. Associated VLAN, that is off by default. You'll want to turn that on, and in this case, associate that VLAN with the public. Now, you may want to associate it with your private VLAN, and, uh, and that's up to you, but that's not the way that uh, we've got this structure. Now, because it doesn't actually show the other VLAN here, uh, I'm guessing that when this is turned off, it automatically defaults to the first VLAN since the first VLAN doesn't show up here. And I think that is the case. I think VLAN 1 is the default. And, uh, and so it assumes that if you choose to disable an associated VLAN. Uh, we'll go with dual band. We'll leave these uh, defaults in place, but just so you know they're there, I'll breeze through some of them. You can restrict it, I think, to specific devices and, and so on, but, um, well, actually, this is the device itself, so I'm not sure how that even figures into things. Okay, and we're going to move down to port forwarding. That is under external access and port forwarding, and here you're going to want to add whatever uh, service it's going to be. Obviously, the status, you're going to turn it on. You're going to uh, sign a TCP or both or what have you there. Uh, the interface that's coming through, in our case, is only the one. You can have multiple ISPs on this device, allowing you multiple WANs, and one port for one WAN, another port for another WAN. Um, that's not the case here. Uh, source IP address, this is was a little bit confusing to me because routers that don't allow multiple internet service providers, there is no source IP address. The source IP address is always um, the same. But if you have multiple WANs, you can have multiple IP addresses, in which case you would choose the one that you're uh, targeting here. The source port, the target port destination IP address, that's the machine that it's going to, that's always the same. And uh, this kind of gives you an idea of our setup. Uh, we've got the source IP address is our public static IP. Um, the destination IP is the IP address of the machine we're targeting. And of course, the uh, port number that we're describing. Now, we have not edited the firewall in any way. So these are the defaults. It allows ping. It allows these other things. Uh, everything else is denied. Uh, except for those things that you're allowing through port forwarding. Now we want to talk a little bit about um, firmware upgrades, but before you would do a firmware upgrade, you want to go down to maintenance, click up backup and restore, and export or save all your current settings. Just clicking that button is going to immediately save it. You can see that bin file in your downloads, put it in a safe place, give it a name you can remember it by, Sometime in the future, if things get hosed, you've got a way to go. Uh, import would work the same way. You just click import, you point it to the file that you want to import, and uh, bring that back in here. Now, on the subject uh, of firmware, let's move on to that. We are going to stay in the maintenance area and go down to upgrade. 
and select file to upgrade. We can browse for it. We can find that file on this page right here, grandstream.com support slash firmware. A um, lot of red letters, uh, and here's some important observation uh, observations. If you are downgrading firmware, if you make the mistake of going from, say, 105 to 103, uh, it is going to cause the device to factory reset automatically, and you will lose any configuration. So you don't want to go backwards. I can't think of a reason to go backwards, but if you do, you're going to lose everything. I don't know if an import from a newer firmware will work to save you, but I can't. You know, the use case of going backwards is pretty rare. These are uh, well marked with the current firmware version that is available to you. Uh, the existing firmware version is visible here at the top of the uh, upgrade page. So 1.0, 9.15 is in fact the same. So I don't need to upgrade mine. I just did it. But to do so, you literally click on that. It'll download the firmware file to your downloads. You'll come here, click the button, um, browse to that zip file after it's been extracted. You do have to extract the bin file. You can see that right here. And, uh, and that'll, that'll upgrade your, your uh, firmware. It's going to take about 30, actually about 60 seconds for your machine to import that and then reboot itself before you'll have an IP address available to log back into. Now, there is the ability to log in automatically via the firmware server path. Now, older firmwares won't have an accurate URL in there um, be because they've changed the URL that they use and they don't, didn't start putting the right one in there until the newer firmware was added. But this one is the later firmware, so it's got that accurate. And I could detect a new version right here. At this point, it says I've got the same firmware, so there's no need in downloading it. But I could detect it, save it, install it, and all that using that method. Now, there is a lot of other settings in this particular router that I'm not going to go into. File sharing, certificates, schedule, security management, and the list goes on and on and on. It really is an impressive device. But these settings will get you up and running. Uh, especially in the case of a static IP, on a um, if you're going to use DHCP, uh, you should be able to utilize these as well with a few minor adjustments. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about GWN Cloud and how it interfaces with your local device. Uh, create an account if you haven't already and sign in. Okay, we have signed in. Looks very familiar, a lot like our local machine interface, except for the big cloud up here and that type of stuff. And you're missing a lot of the menu items in here. Now in the top left corner, you see the default network. We're going to have multiple clients in their devices. So we figure we start this thing off right and create a new network here called CompuMatter. And that'll be our store. Now, the most important thing is connecting to the actual devices and getting them added to the cloud. And you'll do this by clicking the Add button and providing you can give it a random name. The MAC address is on the bottom of the device. The password is that same SSID password. Um, device groups or something else altogether if you want to create groups. Otherwise, just leave it as default. And then click Add when you're done. Now, in theory, it should go out and find it and put it here. In practice, I found it didn't work. So I ended up going out and getting the GWN app. You can see you've got one for um, Android and one for Apple. Once I installed that app, um, I was able to scan the code on the bottom of the device. And as soon as I did that, it added it within the uh, cloud in the application. And then I was able to refresh this page and immediately see my device. So that was my experience. And you can see it gives us the firmware information. It's obviously made direct contact with my device. This little guy on the far right hand side is for remotely accessing your device. So if I click on that, you're watching the top here. This URL is going to change. And there is, in fact, my login page 
which my username and password will work to access. And once you log in, it looks just like the, the interface over here, no different. In fact, I'll do that just so you can see what I'm talking about. And you can see this is the actual device showing uh, clients online right now. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the need to add another user to GWN Cloud. Let's say you have another administrator that you want to be able to access your device so they can help you resolve some kind of a problem remotely. Under organization and users, and this is the organization associated, again, everything I'm doing is under this network that I created separately. And we've got a couple of users here. Okay, we've got the super administrator under the username CompuMatter. We've got um, Jorge as a secondary user. So we're able to create that we can add, create a nickname, provide their email address, set their role, and, um, and save that. And then they're going to get an email automatically so that they can create their own password. Now, it would be nice if we could create a user-specific password for the device itself. Unfortunately, they don't have that down. So you have to give them your main administrative password to the device. And if you ever want to change that, you simply have to change your password to prevent access to existing users. That is a, a major oversight for, for most businesses um, because if you have, you know, 10 people that you've given cloud access to, just as an exaggerated example, um, and one of them things behave badly and you've got to cut them loose, you've got to change your device password and then tell everybody that that device password has changed. Or if there was some linkage there, then um, that wouldn't have to be done. Now, I, I've noticed that under devices, we have the devices that I've got added in the store. Under organization, we have something called inventory. Shows me the same devices. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference is, uh, but we'll dig into that as time goes on. Well, that's it. Um, that is actually, this has been my first introduction to the GrandStream router. I'm extremely impressed with them thus far. I have been using the Ubiquity line right along. These uh, have a surprisingly uh, reasonable price point uh, with a surprisingly strong feature set. Um, they're attacking the cloud and mesh environment in a, in a very big way. And the availability of the merchandise seems to be predictable, which has been a problem of late with uh, the Ubiquity lineup and the edge routers that I had been using. So uh, I'm seriously considering this for all of my client needs moving forward. And that has started with my own store. So thank you for watching. I uh, look forward to any of your comments. and. If you are so inclined, click the subscribe button and you will be among the first to know when we have posted a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.